Now, what about more animated robots? How many of you follow Kickstarter at all? Yeah, with the point on the Alright, Alright, um, we'll give you some backstory on that. And actually, the fact that only a minority of you raised your hands uh, raised one of the issues about, you know, like these are things that we learned from the process, is uh, one of the, and we did mention Kickstarter, so, uh, okay, before we get to that, we'll go back to the DVD releases. Alright, we'll come right back to that. Uh, this is uh, the box set from last uh, holiday season. This came out after last year's uh, after last year's Long Beach Comic Con, and so this is the box of everything in a really good price point. Uh, I think it's a eighty nine ninety five MSRP, but they typically not going to have so under you know forty to fifty bucks or less. You're going to get all three series and all the movies, including Shadow Chronicles, Love of Life, uh, The Sentinels, all in one box. Digitally remastered. So this is the box kit. This is everything so far. Um, and uh, it's been released around the world. Uh, how many of you saw World Take Love Love Live already? Yes. Love Love Seriously? Come on! Alright. Alright, so we, we this is why Long Beach Comic Con is important for the outreach, so the rest of you find out about this. Alright, we're gonna show you just a little trailer that we're proud of uh, that we did for uh, Love Love Live. You know when we did Love Love Live, instead of doing those in a world trailers, <laughs> uh, we got lucky. We, we found the original narrator for Robotech from the 80s, and uh, we, we had him voice it, and we actually cut the trailer as if it was, as if it was being on the air in 1985. Wow. So, so this was like a nice throwback, even the trailer was uh, uh, old school. And uh, there was a little backstory about that, so, so we, we uh, in the bonus features in that box set, when we were talking about the making of Love of Life, we actually talked about how we found the narrator, because uh, back in 85, when, or actually, more recently, when we didn't have the narrator in Shadow Chronicles, and we actually asked the other boys, do you know what happened to J.J. Smith? And they were all like, oh yeah, we, we, we thought he had one foot in the grave back in 85, you know? So they thought he was dead. And, um, but yeah, yeah, so he had a car crash that put him out of commission. But he was like, oh, no, 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 I just blew my hip out. Oh, it's fine. You know, like, well, come on in. You're like much better. Yeah, he, he looks, he's in pretty good shape. But, um, uh, so we did this little snippet on the creator talking, uh, I mean the narrator, talking about how he narrated his work. And what was funny was, uh, he had to go with Greg Sinoff, who voice directed the original Robotech back then, and he had to coach him for about 20 minutes to get his whole original voice back because he's actually from Nebraska and he has this Midwestern twang. And he doesn't sound anything like his stage voice, so uh, I'll show you. Excellent. Legal name John Jason, and my stage name is Jay Kirby, Jay Watson. I was a narrator. You may hear 20, 31. Sing out. You are with my in North America. A phenomenal event occurred in the skies. An event that once again altered the course of human history. I am, I know, I've narrated uh, 1,250 industrial pieces of narration. And I got pretty good at it. But today, we took the Encyclopedia Britannica and invested in the two pages. <laughs> you know, he has an unbelievable resume. If you look at his credits, it goes all the way back to the Lucille Ball show. <laughs> so yeah, so we're we're grateful that he takes care of himself and he's actually in really good health for his age. Yeah. So uh, oh yeah, and uh, we also added a new documentary. Uh, this was a uh, to the inside story. Uh, a lot of fans asked us, okay, you've got all these making ups, you know, done after the fact. You know, everybody's older, reflecting back on the work they did 20, 30 years ago. Can't you have a making of them back then in, you know, short time machine, you know, how on earth can we do something like that, right? Well, luckily, we had this gentleman here. Can you stand up for the crowd? De uh, Dexter O'Donnell. And yes, he does yes. travel to Warren. <laughs> so, uh, Dexter said that he had done a student film back in the 80s, which was about the making of Robotech. And he turned it in as a student film assignment, and then that was that. And of course, nobody else saw it, you know, outside of maybe the faculty at a school. And so we're like, how do we get a hold of this, right? And so he got back in touch with the faculty at Palomar College and asked them, 
what happened to this. And they're all like, oh, well, you know, all those old tape libraries from back then, you know, because they were moving to digital, that was all discarded. So we're like, oh, well, that's too bad. You know, they were like, well, what was it? Robotech. Oh, yeah, that was kind of interesting. So, yeah, that was something that we saved. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so fortunately, yes, they did have it backed up on DVD, and we got this, and we digitally restored it, and so, uh, here, we'll, we'll just do a real... Oh. Oh, okay, well, well, you know, I'll, I'll just show you a short snippet. We, I don't know if we have enough time for the whole thing. Welcome to Robotech, the inside story. For the next few minutes, we'll take a behind-the-scenes look into the animated TV series, Robotech. as three non-related shows by Tatsunoko Productions Limited. Robotech made its debut in March of 1985 and drew rave reviews from the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. The science fiction film magazine Starlog described Robotech as a cross between the intrigue of Dallas and the space adventure of Star Wars put into animated form. During the course of this program, you'll be meeting many of the unseen people who have made Robotech a reality. The executive producer of the show, Ahmed Agrama, explains why Robotech consists of Japanese produced animation. The Japanese, when, when they first started to produce animation, they tried copying Walt Disney. And uh, they noticed that it was a very tedious and a process and that it took uh, a great amount of time and effort to, to get the, the look that a Disney cartoon had. So, being as, as creative and we're actually short on time, so, uh, but we actually have interviews with uh, some of the original voice cast, such as Reba West, the voice of Linda May, during her sessions back then, and also uh, Steve Kramer, who was uh, uh, also uh, one of the voice directors, voice actors, and also co-wrote uh, the series. So we've got that all in there with the original ca cast and crew from 85, so this is pretty awesome. Uh, so that is in that box set, and now, this is the new set that just came out now. Now, this is for people who are sticklers about the various versions of it. ADV is out of business, and so but the original Japanese versions of the series, such as Super Dimension Fortress, Man Cross, Southern Cross, and Mospita, had been out of print for several years, and so people have been asking for that. And at the same time, uh, because the new DVD versions have mostly been focused on the digitally remastered versions of Robotech with 5.1 surround sound, there's some people who want to pretend that they're still the teenage kid watching the TV on an old cathode ray tube with, you know, 2.0 stereo sound, no yeah. sound. They wanted the old school, they want the old analog picture. Well, you know what? There you go. If you want it, you got it. So you got the choice. You can get you know, you can get new hotness and old and busted and old and busted. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all out there. <laughs> and uh, Amazon is actually doing a big promotion on this. Um, uh, it's got a um, MSRP of twenty nine ninety five, but they're doing a special discount, twenty three ninety eight right now. So you can get uh, the first half of all of Macross in Japanese or the original broadcast English all together in one box set. So this is out now. So. This is awesome, so you've got it there. So you can have it your way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, and the uh, nice thing about uh, this is a special exclusive for Amazon. Normally, because this is a really niche item, you know, like for the Uber connoisseur, normally for such a short run, uh, a lot of publishers would, you know, they would go, ah, oh, no, it's not worth it. The market is too niche. But Lionsgate did a special deal as an Amazon exclusive, so this is something that they're going to do for all you Rota connoisseurs. So, there you go. There you go. Now, next to the pipeline. Speaking of, coming back to that subject on uh, the Kickstarter, um, here's some of the cool designs that we had for Robotech Academy. And uh, we're really proud of these designs. Elmar, who had worked with us on Robotech Voltron series, uh, we think he's just an excellent fit. 
And uh, this is uh, some of the animatics that were done. So we were doing early animatics, uh, starting to block out scenes in a similar way like you saw the animatics for Shadow Chronicles back then. <coughs> And uh, people were wondering, well, what is Robotech Academy? Where is it based in the Robotech universe? And a lot of fans were asking us, can't you do something with all the Sentinels material? You know, something, uh, something based in that universe. Because uh, there's a sense of incompleteness from all that work that went into Sentinels back then. And this was something that Carl actually initiated. Uh, he wanted to do something with the Sentinels, but he's also aware that the element of surprise is very important. Because that's what got him kids coming back from school every day to watch Robotech as it was airing. And of course a lot of those Sentinel stories already played out in comics and novels. And so his idea was to take the Sentinel's universe, but to mix it up a little bit, present it differently. And so in the Sentinels you have the issue of rank inflation, like Rick's and Major General or Admiral, depending on what episode you're watching. And he's going off and everybody's like captains, commanders, whatever. Well, what about the next young generation of kids? Because, you know, uh, if you watch that early Sentinels uh, pilot, a lot of kids were grumbling about being left behind, and there's a lot of mention, if you watch the original series, mention of this Robotech Academy, where the best and brightest were supposed to be trained uh, to replenish the next generation of officers. And so, this is where Robotech Academy comes in. And, of course, if you look at the CG work, you notice that we're doing a total throwback to the Sentinels area look of the SDF-3. And so this is where Robotech Academy co comes in. This is occurring in the Sentinels universe concurrently with the Sentinels campaign. And we originally launched our Kickstarter. We were, television is becoming a, a more difficult market to get into because, uh, as everyone knows, media is changing. Television watching habits of people are completely changing. Like, everybody was expecting people to go from picture cubes to HD flat screens, and then out of left field comes iPads and digital eye devices. And so all of a sudden, it's like a whole new, uh, this is like upended the industry. And so we were thinking this might be a way, you know, even though uh, the television is becoming a more difficult market to get into to launch a series, maybe we could get a pilot out more, much more quickly this way. Uh, obviously, uh, with the Kickstarter not happening, that's not going to happen. But uh, as some people, um, I guess uh, to paraphrase, uh, uh, we have moved forward with Plan B. And so we've got a lot of people uh, from the new media, industry, uh, new media industries actually interested in Road to Academy. So we're pursuing these opportunities. And you'll find out more about this soon. We can't go into more detail right now. And so uh, here's some of the designs that went into and so it's really an, an amazing amount of work that went in. So we're not going to, this is definitely something we're not going to abandon at all. And uh, here's uh, some of the pre-production uh, that went into design at the Academy. If any of you are astronomy buffs, this is actually uh, Phobos, uh, one of the small moons of Mars. And you'll actually notice that we actually used the, uh, the geography of Phobos, like we're at. Uh, you'll notice that we use Stickney Crater as the spaceport, which resembles Alice Station from Shadow Chronicles. And so uh, you'll see some carryover in the design. And uh, here's a, a real nice beauty shot of the Academy built into the moon. Now, uh, you're wondering about, if you're wondering about scale, the moon, I believe, have, only has a diameter of about 22 kilometers. So it's very small. So hence, that's why it looks the way it does. The buildings are as big as they are on that moon. So that is the Robotech Academy. And uh, here, uh, if you go on robotechacademy.com, all the stuff that we have prepared, the pre-production design, the work that we're, we put into it, it's actually there. So you can watch the behind the scenes videos, uh, designs, and so this is uh, the Academy design. And uh, these are some of the locales that we have uh, planned out to visit during the course of the storyline. And so those of you familiar with the Sentinel story, you're going to go, oh my goodness, this is one of the Sentinel settings. So it is intersecting with the Sentinel's universe. And uh, here's uh, one of the main characters, Lindsay. She actually has a association with Jack Baker. Uh, from the Sentinel series. You'll find out more as the story unveils. 
and Zor is bad. Now, you're wondering, wait, I thought Zor is dead, right? But you know that the Zor, who died in the end of the Southern Cross series, was actually a clone himself, and Zor died in the graphic novel, and then there's another clone, Ram, so Zor keeps coming back. So, as I would as say, yeah. Oh, Kenny, and we're back. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Zor is essentially the Kenny of the Rotary. Uh, yes. <laughs> is there any chance when this comes out that uh, you might be publishing trade paperbacks or omn omnibus volumes of the Sentinels from Eternity Comics? You know, that's actually a good idea. There, uh, there are some companies interested in that. Uh, that is something that DC Comics hasn't been doing. Um, even though they've been publishing new road to comics for us, in terms of electronic comics, they've been focusing mainly on the DC universe, like Batman, Superman. So this is something, yeah, that's uh, something that should be done. So, yes, we are looking into that. Uh, but uh, in terms of Zor, so you'll notice that his age is different. So this is a different iteration of Zor. He's old Zor. So which Zor is this? And, uh, uh, if any of you are Dune fans, uh, Carl Mason was a huge fan of Dune. He loved reading Dune. And you'll see some of the overlap, like you know, the, the importance of protoculture in this universe as a scarce commodity versus spice, and Zor versus Duncan Idaho. <laughs> Which uh, Duncan Idaho is a Kenny of the Dune universe, yeah. And Duncan Idaho gets one. Yeah. And uh, uh, we also bring back other characters, so you'll see uh, this is a general role of Emerson. and we kind of polish off this design a little bit, so he, he you know, obviously his universe uh, is consistent with this Southern Cross up, but we made it a little bit more badass looking, you know, because, man, they look so good with the officers, senior officers, cab, and some uh, mecha designs. Uh, really awesome mech designs. All right, some still needed work because we were still working on it. We were posting stuff, but oh yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so we're obviously working in a now modern uh, uh, philosophies of uh, stealth-based design into the universe here. Uh, and here's a little snippet from Greg Stanger. Greg actually here, uh, one of the original staff writers of Rotech. Uh, talks about the theme and the premise of Robotech Academy. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Robotech Academy. The Robotech Academy occurs concurrently with the unfinished Sentinel storyline of the Robotech side. By this time, the Earth has been ravaged by decades of interplanetary war. The Robotech Expeditionary Force, commanded by Admiral Rick Hunter, aboard the STF-3, has departed for the home world of the Robotech Masters to draw the battle away from Earth. So the officers of the Expeditionary Force have placed their greatest treasures, their children, in the Robotech Academy. Based on a moon in orbit around Mars, the Academy was created as a safe haven for these young cadets. However, as the Academy also functions as a research center for advanced robotechnology, it becomes an inviting target. The story focuses on a fresh class of young characters, including child prodigy Wally, and the swashbuckling team pilot Lindsay, who is an old rival and associate of Jack Baker. Their lives are turned upside down when the Academy is attacked by alien fanatics who call themselves the children of Zor, trying to reclaim the lost secrets of robotechnology, which they believe to be rightfully theirs. Unbeknownst to the new class, this treasure trove of robotechnology just happens to be hidden right under everybody's noses throughout the Academy, in places such as the Campus Museum, in an unexpected maneuver that saves the lives of the young student body, an experimental space fold drive is activated, which suddenly transports the cadets away from the battle. However, they end up in a distant, uncharted region of the galaxy, and their supply of protoculture used to power the space fold drive is extremely limited. Valuable clues to lead them out of their predicament have been left behind by none other than the originator of robotechnology itself, Zor. They discover the path that Zora's ship had once taken before it eventually crashed on planet Earth. This next generation of heroes must rise to the challenge, facing mysterious aliens and making difficult choices as they rely on their wits. They have to scavenge prototype mecha hidden across the campus and journey past a series of alien worlds to 
find their way back home, or at least rendezvous with the Robotech Expeditionary Force. And you'll also see familiar faces from the Robotech leadership, such as Rolf Emerson, Anatole Leonard, Dr. Lang, and Rick. Hey guys, Tony, how you doing? What are you guys up to? <laughs> Alright, if you want to find out more, go to RobotechAcademy.com so you can see more videos about it. So, we, yeah, we've got all the clips, including Rick Finley, uh, the voice of the Leonard, uh, talked about their experiences. And uh, here's a really nice clip of the Academy executing a space pole from the Martian surface. Awesome. So, yeah, we were really pleased with uh, the design and uh, uh, the design work that went into this. So, this is definitely, you know, even though the Kickstarter is not happening, uh, this is something that we're definitely putting in more work into. So, uh, we're looking forward to that. And, uh, I know we're running low on time, so we're going to have, uh, you can, if you have more questions for us that we don't have time for here, you can visit us at the exhibit hall number 354 at the back of the exhibit hall. Uh, so, for those of you who do have questions, we got some stuff to give away. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir, in front. Well, how are you progressing with the Robotech Academy, et cetera, and what you're producing for uh, purchase? Will there also be an <laughs> online component that's interactive that will be running somewhat like maybe concurrently? So you can get both from whether it's a movie, a comic book, whatever, and also you can go even farther in depth to your website. Too early to tell. I, I, in this day and age, it is a given that there's going to be an online component. We don't know exactly what that's going to be. I know because the Kickstarter is not happening, that's uh, making it less likely it's going to be traditional television, and it's probably going to be something new media. But uh, you know, uh, when we have more information about that, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll post that. So come on up and get a prize. Yeah, come on up. Uh, all right, we'll go to the next question. Bevo holding the camera. Yeah, um, for, for San Diego Anime Expo and Comic Con, you uh, announced uh, Cesar Torturo as a yes. production behind it. Is he going to be still in the production? or? Uh, we don't know exactly how he's going to be involved. Uh, we were hoping, uh, we worked into like a budget, assuming that the kids already got to, through, that you know, how he would work into the production. Uh, this would obviously be different because whoever backs this project differently might have ideas about how they're going to put this project together. But Cesar works very, very, he's very, very highly regarded because uh, the people in the industry are aware of the work that he did and it's viewed very favorably. So, you know, we don't know exactly how the project is going to fall together in the end, but, uh, you know, I, I would definitely, I would vouch for Cesar and push to have him be part of it. And the time date. Uh, release date? Oh, we, we, no, we don't have a release date. Uh, you know, I mean, if the Kickstarter happened, we would have had, we would have had a release date for you. It would have been uh, by next summer. Uh, at this point, uh, because we're still putting the particulars together for this uh, project through Code Code Plan B, we don't, we don't have that information yet. Uh, yes, the white cap. Is Warner Brothers still developing a live action film? Like yes, they are. Matthews? Yes, yes, they are still working. Uh, this is something. This option is. Uh, still at Warner Brothers Pictures, and uh, they have a producer assigned to it working on it, and, uh, but uh, this is something that hasn't been greenlit yet, so we'll wait and see, you know, how they're, yes? Well, they originally had Nick Matthews set to direct, does that change? No, no, that hasn't changed. Oh, he's okay. still, so he's still part of the most recent creative team that uh, still working on it, so they're still actively working in development on this, yes. Uh, yes, with the beer? Me? Yeah. How do you know me? Huh? You know me. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, you know, uh, you know when there's when there's like uh, you know um, dozens of you out there versus like one of me and you guys. Chili's last year. Huh? Chili's last year? Yeah, I remember. I don't I remember. Like no, I'm I'm bad with names. Uh, ask me again next year. <laughs> so. No, I was gonna say congratulations on getting this worked out. So first of all, I'm curious, how do the rights issues get solved? Which one? What do you well, about? Especially, you know, we'll question about Tatsunoko with Mad Cross and other companies. How the right issues get solved? Uh, it, it, it kind of fell together because huh. it, 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 went, it worked its way through, to, through the Tokyo Supreme Court, which is Japan's version of the Supreme Court. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, uh, nothing, as far as I know, nothing really changed. Uh, our, our license, uh, our license uh, has actually been upheld as valid. Wow. 
So uh, that's otherwise, you know, uh, how you know how is this Robotech pro you know product still continuing to be distributed? Right. Yeah. Surprise. Uh, yes, sir. Is there any idea about doing further development on some more video games? Yes, that has been something that has Warner wanted to reserve a lot of video game rights because you know for any live action movie that happens, uh, they, they obviously want to have a video game tie-in reserve to work in conjunction with that. But uh, there's some things, uh, some categories of mobile that we've been working on. Uh, that would compete with such a, a project. Um, I can't tell you exactly about the details of it now, but I know, uh, like, you know, stuff that used to come out for the Game Boy, and people were like saying that would be such a no duh to have it work. I still on. have my original PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. so please. yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah, so a lot, you know, a lot of these phones now have the capability to do play, you know, classic games from back then. So that's that's actually the low hanging. We've actually got some folks looking into that. Uh, yeah, so, please, go here. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, for Robotech Academy for your Kickstarter, uh, are you going to try to automate it to an app as well? Uh, uh, be, be, because the Kickstarter campaign uh, is no longer happening, uh, stuff that was planned for that, that none of that is going to happen. It's going to happen. We're going to have stuff happen, but it's going to happen differently. And we can't really get, go into the details about that because that's all still falling together. Yes. I'm not sure where you're going to set your Facebook site up. Oh, no, we already know. Robotechacademy.com. Yeah. So it's all set up there already, the website wise. So you can go there right now to see the work that has been done so far. And as more news happens, we'll post it there. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, what's on the horizon for Shadow Chrome? Check on Okay, now people were wondering why has all the other projects been moved to the front? Like, why did all of a sudden, you know, Carl Mason's Rogue the Universe get made, and then all of a sudden Love Live Live get made, and then now Rogue the Academy? The reason why these got prioritized is because Carl passed away and these were on his plate. And uh, from, and I'm going to say this coming from me, is my perspective is those were important to him, he was working on those, and I would rather get his unfinished projects done first before it gets forgotten about, because uh, that would be a real big shame. And then, you know, we can continue on with, you know, other projects, but yeah, that is why all those projects are prioritized. So, uh, yes, sir, in the capital. Um, I know this project has been in the future, but since the comic books did really well with the whole time, or uh, yeah. like the uh, logic deck, would that be something like maybe later on in the future, like a motion film or anything that any talks about that animated? I don't know. Uh, there, there have been a lot of questions about uh, motion comics. Here's the problem: is motion comics is such a malleable field. Is it? Is it? Is it a DVD? Is it something on the web? You know, and there's some that are done pretty well, like The Watchmen, and there's some that are done pretty bad. And so obviously we want to make sure we do it right. Oh, we're out of time? Okay. So yeah, if you have more questions, come to Robotech Expanded and we can uh, follow up uh, if you have any questions there.